Hey, Albert. Hi. I'm so happy to speak with you. I'm really Finally, I'm happy. Finally. You know, I, first of all, I'm thrilled that um, Don O'Dell had me come in, and thanks to Art Topaldi for being away at the moment and letting me fill That's in. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. They're both great guys. You've been here before. Many times. Yeah. So this is very exciting. Yeah. It's always a, a great time. <clears throat> And the first time I actually met you was at the White Mountain Boogie and Blues Festival. And um, I was just so impressed. Thank and you. then played some of your, your music, which we have here tonight. Right. And then, as luck would have it, saw you at the Tampa Bay Blues Festival in April. And, you know, we had the camera out and I had got, you know, the CD out. We did an ID. Just about to interview you. And all of a sudden, Albert Castillo to the stage. And it's Brian Lee. <laughs> With Ronnie Earl and Doug Deming. Absolutely. And so you go, got to go. I said, well, I'll catch up with you. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was very apologetic. You were wonderful, matter of fact. You I didn't feel me. very wonderful about leaving you, like, oh. like hanging like thank that. You. But. Well, yeah, but I was, thank you. Yeah, but I was, thank you. I knew I'd find you again. And um, you rocked it out with Brian and Ronnie. And yeah. it was just, that was incredible. Because I'd never it really was. heard you kind of go at it like that, you know? Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. It well, those guys bring it out of you, you know? Yeah. They bring the best out of you when, when you're on stage with them. So. Definitely. So tell me about last night. I know you played with, uh, with Ronnie at the... Uh, Ronnie, actually, Ronnie, uh, he came to the show, but he didn't, he didn't play. He, okay. he had to leave early. So. Okay. But how was the show? But the show was great. Yeah, Bull Run in Shirley Mass was just awesome. I know they love you out there. People are posting pictures. Yeah, they, you know, they're starting to. They're coming around. I've never played there before, but we had a pretty good crowd for first time up there. I'm so glad. It was, yeah. it was great. So um, tell me about the tour. Are you on a little tour, a big tour? What's it's on? Kind of, well, it's kind of a little tour, but I mean, we're, we're doing a series of little tours throughout the summer. Okay. So this one was running about eight, nine, ten days, and then I'm coming home, going home to Florida for a couple yeah. of weeks, and then I'm back out again, this time to the Midwest at the end of August. And Florida, you're from South Florida. Yes, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. But I, you know, I didn't realize when I was, I was doing a little research, you actually were born in New York. Yeah, I was born in uh, Long Island. You were born in Long Island. But I, I lived in Queens until I was five. Wow, kindergarten in Queens? Uh, Maybe. And it was like four and a half when we left. Yeah. I, I think kindergarten happened when I... Got to Miami? Got to Miami. I, and at Cuban My dad. father's Sicilian and my Sicilian. mother's Cuban. How, what a nice combination. Yes, it's... But, well, fiery hypertension. Yeah, doomed for hypertension for the rest of my life. Really? Well, wow. Keep that olive oil in the diet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> olive oil and garlic plus. Um, I want to talk about this CD, Solid Ground, because I really love it. But you're also telling me that you have a new uh, CD that's coming out right now. Well, uh, well, Roof just released uh, my my label, Roof Records, just released uh, um, a Blues Caravan live DVD and CD. Mm -hmm from the tour I did with them last year. That must have been great. Oh, it was great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, tell me, and who was on that tour? Uh, Lawrence Jones, uh, a yeah. guitar slinger from, from England, mm -hmm. and Christina Schoberg, who's a, a guitar player from uh, Norway. Oh, excellent. And we had a little band behind us, and we toured for about two or three months. Two or three months is fun. Yeah. Did your family, did your wife get to uh, join you on the she tour? Didn't, she didn't. She we, didn't. We, you know, we had a, my dog got sick. She actually wanted to make one of, uh, one of the trips, mm -hmm. but my dog got real sick, and she had to stay with him. Oh, okay. But well, um, hope you brought presents. Huh? I hope you brought presents. I did. Well, I brought I brought her a few things. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good husband. Let's talk about solid ground for a bit. Sure. Here. This is wonderful. I've been playing a lot of it. Um, you know, I've been playing a lot of different tunes. I started off with you know, keep you around too long and bad avenue. But then, I mean, then, you know, Sway, I mean, it's wonderful. Um, Thank and you. And also, you're welcome. Also, Little Havana Blues, I love this, Oroz con Mango. Yeah. You know, a little Lat Latino flavor. Yeah. Um, tell me about uh, the tunes on here. There's 14 tunes. I always ask artists this. Are there any that are your favorites, or do you love them all? They're all like my kids, you know. Okay. So it's hard for me to, uh, to, to judge them. Mm -hmm. individually but you know I mean uh, I guess live there are just some songs that I like that I that I like to play you know that I'll that I'll favor live you know tonight um, we're gonna hear some of these songs actually I've played them all I played most of them on Don O'Dell so I think what we're, what we're okay. left with um, on this show mm -hmm. is gonna be a lot of improvisational stuff oh that's gonna be great well there's actually there's a couple of songs from 
my upcoming CD that I'm going to record mm -hmm. in October that we're going to do tonight. I'm going in the studio in October with, uh, and Mike Zito is going to produce the record. Oh, gosh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. awesome. So I yeah. think we're going to do a couple of those tunes. And I got John Ginty playing on uh, B3 with us. Great is he here keyboard. tonight? He is. He's a great keyboard player out of uh, New Jersey. Well, he's one of the founding members of Robert Randolph's band. That is correct. Who I just saw and interviewed last week. Really? He, yes, they were just up here and magnificent. And um, He's uh, a good friend. He's the best. Yeah. He's he's so awesome. He has he had so much to to a band, and uh, I wish I could afford to keep keep him around all but the time. He's playing with the Dixie Chicks. So. Well, yes, he, he's done Jewel. He's done the Dixie Chicks. But it, it's wonderful. I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing him tonight too. Great. So who is in the band tonight, and who is also on this CD? Well, um, on the CD I have um, Bob Amzell, who's my regular drummer, mm -hmm. and Matt Schuler, who's playing tonight on bass. And, but tonight I got Christopher Schneblin, formerly a Trampled Underfoot, playing yeah. drums with me tonight. It's going to be great. Yeah. Really, it's been, very, very cool. It's good to have friends like that to it pick is. up the slack when, when your regular guy can't, can't yeah. make it. Yeah. Well, and, and for the next release, you're recording it where? I'm recording it in Dockside Studios in Maurice, Louisiana. Oh, very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Actually, my old boss, uh, Junior Wells, recorded his last studio album there. So it's, it was a sign that I had to, I, you know, they, they said, oh, they gave me a choice of places and they mentioned mm -hmm. that place. I said, well, I think it's a sign. I, there I, I are signs. I believe in signs. I yeah. believe in signs too. As a matter of fact, well, I want to just finish about this particular CD here. Okay. Um, I love the fact that you go fast and you go slow. Um, you know, the sleepless nights, that's a great one. People love that, slow and sexy. They like you know, that one. They like that one. They like that one. Um, searching. Um, searching the desert for the blues. Yep, yeah. yep. And I was hungry when I first saw this, and I thought, oh, searching for dessert. Wait, I better read it again. People say that sometimes. They <laughs> slip up. I know. <laughs> searching the dessert for the blues. Exactly. Yeah, it was like, it was funny. <laughs> but, you know, it, and the sway, obviously, some, some of your influences, the Stones. Yes. Yeah, I could tell. Yeah, well, I, when I, uh, I recorded the album before yeah, Roof yeah. Records, uh, Signed, signed me, so mm -hmm. I kind of just wanted to do what I wanted to do on the record instead of having, you know, before I had a label, uh, I was with a label and they kind of, it was a compromise to get Absolutely. certain material on, as it is with most labels, but when I was able to do it on my own, I just said, I'm going to do whatever I want, blah, 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 and that's it. And then, and Roof Hammond like it, you know, they didn't really didn't matter that it was a Rolling Stones song. They gave you creative license. Yeah, they, they were great. Cool. They were great on this one. And so, uh, you know, you were very young when, when um, you're still very young, but when... God bless you. You're welcome. When Junior Wells, how did you connect with Junior Wells? Oh, we had a mutual friend in, in, uh, in Florida, and, um, and uh, she invited me to go see him, and, uh, and was able to get, get him to let me up on stage with him. And he must have been like, wow. I was. It was I, that was the highlight of my life at the time. I thought, Seven I'd, years? How long were you with him? I was, well, I was only with him, uh, I was with him less than a year. Oh, less than a year. Okay. But, I, but it changed my life forever because I, I had to relocate to Chicago to play with him. And, and uh, I stayed after he passed away. I stayed there. And, yeah. And um, I, when, I, when, he, when he took me on, I, I told myself I was never going to go back to working a, a job that I disliked or hated. And I was gonna just stick with the music, full time. Mm -hmm. So it really, it, it, he changed my life. You know, it's interesting that you're saying that. Um, I saw Jun Buddy and Junior together many times, but the first time I saw him was at a little club in Cambridge called Jonathan Swift's. Mm -hmm. And you know, Buddy went out and got on, almost got on a bus as it's going by, and they did. But I learned. I was pretty young, and I learned a lot from them. You know, there's happy blues, there's sad blues. It doesn't always have to be like d dragged, dragged out blues. I feel like I learned a lot from, from Junior Wells too. Oh, well, you always learn from the blues. Yeah. I mean, the stories, the stories are, are uh, there are morals to all, every story. There's, of, and, there's and blues. themes and stories. Yeah, you can learn a lot from the blues. Life and Well, love. I mean, it grabbed me it, it, when I first heard it, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but you were coming out, I mean, and, and Junior definitely helped a lot of younger uh, guitar players, harmonica players. Um, you were coming out of Florida, you were in a band, and you actually had won a Best 
a guitar player award early on, right? Uh, the Miami News Ta yeah. New Times Magazine. Yeah. Yeah. Was, so it wasn't like you just like you know you you had worked hard and you were talented. Well, I've been I've been doing it ten years by then, but that going on the road with a traveling Chicago blues band it was a whole new level. That was a that was going up. That was like graduating to college. That was a whole different level. I mean, I was pretty much a local guy. Yeah. And and this took me. Took you up there. Yeah, I really so did. So who change. else are some of your influences? Who do you listen to now, or who do you consider? Um, an influence on you musically. Well, well, Buddy Guy is a is my favorite living guitar player. Yeah, I love Buddy Guy. I'm gonna and see him in a few weeks. So are you? He's coming oh. up this way to a place. Yeah. Yeah, he's with Tom Hambridge, who lived here for a while. Right, he's great. Um, the, the young people. I mean, I like I like Mike Zito a lot. Zito. I just saw Zito with Tinsley Ellis. I think. Sure. Tinsley's what another a show. one. show. Yes. <clears throat> it's really hard to pinpoint who I'm listening to and mm -hmm. who are my influences. I mean. It, there's so many. I think I think musicians are influenced by everything they they listen to that gives them Goosebumps, goosebumps hair or, on your head. Yeah. But do you listen to uh, other kinds of music? I'm sure you do. I like um I like like the outlaw country stuff. Yeah. You know. Well, I can hear that in you. I can hear that when you do that rock. I like Delbert. Stuff. I like Delbert McClinton and and um, and uh, you know Shooter Jennings and mm -hmm. Willie Nelson and. Mm -hmm. Waylon Jennings, yeah, and, uh, the good all, all, all that stuff. That, yeah. yeah, Delbert. I'm just. I, I've been a Delbert fan forever. And um, Etta Britt. Do you know Etta Britt? She does a whole CD called Etta Does Delbert, and it's just. I'm not familiar with it. It's beautiful. Cool. I have to get you a copy because it's it's really special. Cool. Um, tell me about your guitars and you think special kind of instruments that you play and enjoy. Well, I'm currently using. I have a um, Les Pauls. I'm playing Les Pauls, but I, I also have a signature. Uh, model that I use yeah. from Delaney Guitars, which is a, a luthier out of Austin, Texas. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful. It's a. I think it's on the on the latest album cover. It's a. Uh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, turquoise. Gorgeous. Turquoise blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Do you have it with you tonight? I don't know if I, I used it a couple of nights ago, and I think the strings are pretty gnarly. Okay, so we're so not. So I don't know if I'm going to use it tonight. I'll have to take a look. Mm -hmm. Um. 